So I just completed an interview with a director from Atmex, and he gave me a ton of great information, statistics on what people buy from Atmex, which is the world's largest precious metals dealer. So it's kind of, you know, good statistics to have, right? And I'm going to talk to him here in just a minute. I'm going to ask him a few questions about uh, what people buy, what people sell, uh, when to expect certain things like 2023 Libertad, stuff like that. And I'm also going to show you some of this data as this interview goes along. So if you're into that, then stay tuned. Coming right up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Florida Stacker on YouTube. I've been trying to talk with Atmex. Atmex is probably the largest precious metals dealer that, that I do business with. And I've got Patrick Yip from Atmex on the phone right now. We're just going to have a conversation about gold and silver. We'll talk mostly about bullion. But we will get into a little bit with the numismatics, and I'll have some questions for him regarding a few coins that are coming out. So, Patrick, welcome to Florida Stacker on YouTube. Thanks for taking time from your day to meet with me today. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So I saw your interview maybe two weeks ago with Silver Heist, who's, uh, who's one of my friends in the community. Great interview. Uh, you definitely gave the community some good information as far as, uh, you know, what people are typically buying when it comes to gold, in particular at Atmex. So, Patrick, what do you do at Atmex? Sure. I'm the director of business development at Atmex. Um, so I've been with the company for almost 13 years now. Um, I've held various roles in merchandising, sales, uh, project management, uh, marketplaces such as eBay and Amazon, and now business development. A um, couple of things I'm doing right now is um, we launched and, and I'm running One Gold, which is an online investment platform, which allows customers to buy a vaulted position of gold, silver, and platinum. Um, so that's one thing. Um, last year, I led the launch of the Bullion Card. That's the first precious metals rewards credit card. So instead of earning cash back or airline miles, um, you're getting precious metals back, um, which I think is super cool. I haven't got a credit card in probably 15 years, and, and I decided to get one of these. Um, and another thing we're looking at to do is potentially launching a precious metals debit card, um, which allows customers to essentially spend their gold and silver that they have in their one gold account. Oh, wow. OK, so I, I don't I haven't mentioned it to you yet, but I, I have been a member of one gold for probably like two, two years. Uh, it's a great service. I love the fact that you can. My, my favorite thing about it, just sharing my my uh, feedback with you is the ability to. Uh, get your best pricing whenever you do decide to convert your vaulted products into physical products. I think that's a great option. And you can't beat the fact that I think the last time I redeemed through one gold, I had the product like three days later. It was so fast from the time that I, that I, anyways, off topic, didn't know we were going to talk about one gold, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know what, I'll need to do an updated video on one gold. That's something we can talk about then uh, uh, here in the future. So awesome, man. So maybe share with us, I guess it's been a couple of weeks, as mentioned, since you talked with Silver Heist. Um, what's going on in Atmex? What are people buying today? Yeah, so I actually did a speech at the Rural Symposium Conference last um, month, and I talked about um, basically what people are buying, gold or silver, coins, bars, and rounds. What are the top gold coins, top gold, silver coins? Um, we could get into some of this data too, but the goal of my presentation was to ideally make um, listeners a better and more informed uh, investor because sometimes you go out there and especially for the new people if you say hey buy gold buy silver then they go on a site like atmex you, you'll see that we have thirty thousand products available in stock then they said well, where do i start um and then it could be it could be overwhelming uh, but we could go into some of those stats too um i guess just starting with gold versus silver um, and this is looking at year-to-date um, sales numbers so this is well over a billion dollars in retail transactions um, uh, of data so on the, the metal mix side, we're looking at about 67% uh, or 67, 68% gold. So a, a decent amount of gold, 30% um, silver, and then about 1.5% platinum and you know, less than 1% palladium, less than 1% uh, non-metal, which is like copper. Right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So so the gold bugs are are the, the bigger customers. That, now, is that on a dollar basis or is that- This on is on a dollar basis, yeah. Okay. Well, that kind of makes, I would assume that would be the case considering, you know, what the gold to silver ratios hovering about 80 to one today. So, yeah. you know, I, I would assume, I guess that, that there would be, you know, more dollars going into gold. And we've seen a lot of countries buying gold over the last couple of years. There's uh, obviously they had the BRICS conference recently and uh, yeah, so I could, I could totally understand those stats. Uh, my question, my next question for you, Pat, are you a stacker? Are, are I am. You, I you have are. actually 
I've been buying, uh, buying, act, act, actively buying gold and silver since 2008. So since the financial crisis, that was kind of my big wake up call that, hey, something's not right here. Uh, but I've been, yeah, I've been buying for years. Um, I remember buying a lot of, a lot of gold at under a thousand bucks, buying a lot of silver, you know, 12, 13, $14. Um, but my first gold coin was actually in 1988. It was actually my, um, grandparents in Hong Kong were, um, in the gold and silver business and I got a gold coin. It was a brand new coin back then in 1988. And I thought it was neat. Didn't think much about it, but yeah. I still have that. It's kind of neat that, you know, it's hard to believe that, um, uh, back in that, well, okay, I can't go back to the 80s, but I read an email on my channel uh, two weeks ago about uh, me buying gold back in 2001, and I was buying 10 gram Pamp Swiss bars for under $100 <laughs> back yeah. then. Yeah. You know, Crazy prices. Spot price was like 260 an ounce. Yeah. And uh, wow, just. I mean, it really goes to show that uh, uh, the dollar has just lost so much of its buying power uh, since 20, uh, 2001, uh, about 22, 23 years. And, uh, you know, how important it is to really have a long viewpoint and focus on, on your metals purchases. It's obviously not something, you know, you, you get into and get out quick, uh, hoping to make a profit. It's definitely more of a a sec it's not a security in the terms of, you know, how Wall Street would classify a security, but it offers you security. And um, are, are those the reasons that you're stacking you, mostly for, you know, you're just trying to have, just trying to build a little uh, personal security or or do you do you have like a big goal in mind, maybe in the future? I, for one, want to pay my mortgage off, but I, I don't know what your what your motivations are. I do have a, a long-term goal and it is an active part of my retirement strategy, but I just look at it and, and you look at what's going on. You mentioned inflation too, is one of the things. Um, another thing is even central bank buying too. You look at it and I think 2022, um, looking at annual years, um, was was uh, the 55 plus year high in the amount of gold that central banks bought. And I think it's the 13th or 14th consecutive year that they have been buying gold. You have to keep in mind, these are the people that are selling, setting monetary policies all across the world, and they're buying gold. So my thought is, is you look around, and, and if their buying of gold doesn't get you to, honestly, I don't know what will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've heard it said before that gold is the, is the metal of nations and silver is the metal of men. You know, like you and I want to do some type of transaction. I can give you silver for goods and services, but countries, they, they definitely have to move that gold and, yeah. and have it to kind of back whatever it is that they you know want to do later in life, just like us. So move on to our next question. You said you spoke a little bit about premiums when you, when you did your latest um, uh, symposium, right? And we've yeah. noticed uh, here on this channel that premiums have started to, to come down on a lot of the more traditional uh, coins, bars, and rounds, namely that stackers buy, uh, mostly with silver. Can we can we expect premiums to stay lower now that we're a few years out of the pandemic? And then also, I want to ask you, what about gold? When are we going to start seeing like fractional gold premiums start to come down? Because it feels like uh, we haven't seen much movement when it comes to gold. Yeah, so I guess to answer your first or your question, uh, yes, I do expect premiums to go down. Um, I think it's also important to talk. Let's take a couple steps back and look at, at what's happened with premiums to to give some list, some of your listeners a context in this. But yeah. so anyone who's been in the market will remember 2011 and 2012. I'll see you had gold running up to nineteen hundred dollars, silver running up to fifty dollars. There was a crazy amount of demand during those years, and, and then you fast forward a year or so, um, and then and. 2013 up till 2019, you had demand um, dramatically softened. And if you look at some stats too, I think um, around 2013, 2014, I think the U.S. Mint was was making about a, a two million one ounce gold eagles. You look at 2019, they're making less than 500,000. So you know a fourth of the demand um, right. just in, in several years. So you know, like any production facility, like any business, you're going to say, well, if my demand's low, I'm going to right size my staffing. So they're going to turn machines, get rid of some of the staff for that normal demand, right? So, so they, they right-size themselves for that demand up till 2019. And then obviously anyone involved in the precious metals community will know that demand, you know, doubled, tripled on, on in 2020 and going forward. So what happened there is the mints right-sized their demand for this, this limited, slower market um, in 2019. 2020 hit, they couldn't produce as many coins. Um, so what happened there is they said, okay, I'm only producing X number of coins. A dealer like Atmex may even need 2x the amount of coins. 
So what they say is, well, I only produce X. I got to allocate these between all my partners um, to make them happy. Um, and then a dealer like Atmex, we get a fraction of, of their per percentage. We need four, five, six times more than, than, than let's say, what, what we get. Um, and this is from any mid. Um, so we start buying a lot of these from the secondary market. So we reach out to a lot of the other dealers who purchase directly from the mids. So we start buying their allocation, um, buying whatever the mint allocates to them. And then what happens is they're in the business to make money. So they mark it up above and beyond um, what what they bought it from the U.S. Mint. Like, for example, the U.S. Mint sells us um, a Silver Eagle for about $2.95 um, over spot as an authorized purchaser. At oh, one point, we were paying... Then. Yeah, it, it has gone up. Yep. Um, we it, at one point we were paying paying north of ten or eleven dollars from from wholesalers, and obviously that was the time when premiums were probably fifteen twenty dollars. Um, so I mean, basically that's what's happened in the market. So fast forward to today, um, you'll see, you're seeing that obviously a lot of people, are, a lot of the mints are getting machines back online. It's been a couple of years. You're also seeing demand kind of normalize, so it's not at the levels you saw initially when you had the pandemic spike. So it's allowing a lot of these mints to now catch up. Um, so they're saying, okay, I'm making more coins. Um, I'm allocating across all the dealer networks. Um, and then now, now premiums are going down because we're able to meet more of our need directly from the dealers. Um, and I think it's also important too to, to, to note that like we hedge our metals too. So like we're, we basically sell a, a sell a bit of premium. So if we pay two ninety five over for for a um, let's say Silver Eagle and we sell it for six bucks, we're making that three dollars and five cents. That that's essentially what we're making. Um, the metal price is is irrelevant. But what happens is if we're buying at $10 over, like we have been at some point, we can't hedge that premium. Um, so we are we could be exposed and um, hopefully no, no dealers like this, but I think Silver Eagle premiums are pr probably around like $7, $8 right now. Um, but if you bought at 10, you're underwater and there's no way you could hedge that. So it's, it's a difficult business in this type of market. But I think what's happening is, is demand softening. Um, you'll see the mint start catching up. Um, fractional gold is a good example too, because if you look at a mint, what are they going to produce? If they have to stamp a coin, regardless of the size, whether it's a one ounce, a half ounce, quarter ounce, or a tenth ounce, so they'd rather rather make the one ounce. But over time, when they do catch up on the one ounce, they'll start minting more fractionals, and I think premiums will go down. Okay, thank you for the uh, for the insight on that. Um, so I was at my local coin shop today, and just to kind of put it into perspective, he's buying from wholesalers right now. At about three seventy-five to four dollars, and selling, uh, you know, four fifty, four seventy-five. So in a tube of Silver Eagles, you know, the coin shop makes not even twenty bucks when you when you when you when you do the math. But the thing is, he yeah. gets two monster box in, opens the doors at ten by noon, they're gone, <laughs> they're gone. Yeah. Um, I was in there this morning and watched a man buy two monster boxes of silver buffalo rounds, and uh, another guy come in and sell some uh, pre thirty-three gold, but. There's not a whole lot of silver coming into the coin shops right now. It's mostly going out. So he's having to order in instead of people coming in and and and, and selling across the counter. Um, but he did tell me that premiums are starting to creep on back up again on the ASEs and the 90% in particular. It, it could be a bounce effect, right? You know, they came down yep. pretty good, pretty fast. Spot came down at the same time. Now spots retracing and uh, and premiums because of the demand's starting to come back up. But just getting that out there <laughs> for everybody watching today that that premiums did come down. They they might creep up just a little bit, but overall we're we're in a much better spot today to buy than we were over the last couple of years. Um, Patrick, so over the last couple of years, I have recommended to uh, some of my viewers to maybe focus on semi numismatics or numismatics during that time of high premiums. It just you know if you can get a uh, a, a nice Morgan dollar for less than a standard American silver eagle. Why not? And um, but nowadays, I don't know. What do you think? How how are semi numismatics and numismatics looking in the market right now? Yeah. So I had a slide actually at the Royal Symposium about this too. And so this is once again looking at our year to date sales. So about fifty eight percent of our, our dollar values of of sales go into bullion. So a, a lot of people are stackers. That they they want something low premium, basically just for the gold and silver value. But surprisingly, 36% of our sales are what we call semi-numismatic. So they have a, a small premium over the, the gold or silver content. And for example, one of the top semi-numismatic gold coins is a, is a um, $20, um, what is it, Liberty coin in uh, MS64. Um, but a, a lot of people are buying that. And then about the remaining 6% are buying what we call pure numismatic. So th these are the, the things where the, the gold and silver price are not really even relevant. But 
I'm I'm a big believer in in buying some of the semi numismatics. And first of all, let me say that you know with with semi numismatics, make sure you know, or even numismatics, make sure you know what you're doing before you just jump into there. Because I would say there's people who make a living on numismatics and semi numismatics, and there's people who lose their life savings in there. So you know, make yes. sure you you know, you, you, you don't. You don't go all in um, um, until you know what what you're doing. But I know we talked about Libertad's um, before um, we we started recording, and I think Libertad's is a great one too. Where if when those launch, um, you could get them for a small markup over um, the the silver price or the gold price, um, and then over time they tend to appreciate. And not only do you do you win on if silver goes up or gold goes up, you also could potentially benefit on the premium appreciation too. So you kind of get a, a dual bang for your buck there. Yeah, actually, um, we were uh, for the audience talking about the the 2023 Libertads, and I, I did ask Patrick if he had any information he could share on when they're uh, going to be available. It's getting late into the year app now for the 2023s. And uh, did you have anything you could share with uh, with the viewers on those? Yeah, so I can't give the ex exact release date, um, but I can say it is going to be in Q4 of this year. So they are producing the 2023 coins. Uh, I would recommend if any of you guys are interested in that. Um, go to our website, find whatever you want, either the gold or silver Lee or Todd's. There's actually an alert me button over there. So you could put in your email, you could put in your phone number, and we'll notify you as soon as those uh, coins become available. And then you could just buy them. Um, and like I said, I think, you know, long term, they're, they're, they're a pretty good buy. Um, I know even our VP of merchandising um, is a fan of uh, the Libra Todd's too. But he owns some of those too. So, you know, I guess two, two uh, leaders at Amex buying this stuff. There you go. And when we were talking about Libertads, I mentioned to Patrick that uh, me personally, I try to buy a full tube of 25 if I have the funds available to do that, like right when they come out, because it just feels that in the, the time I've been stacking and collecting, they only go up in value over time. So um, if you are interested in Libertads, uh, yeah, that that option at Atmex is great. You can go in and set alerts. I actually have used that uh, more than a few times to get alerts on when things are you know coming back in stock, especially something that I know is going to move quick. And they can move quick. It, I guess it depends, but they can they can move quick. Hey, another question for you regarding ninety percent silver. So ninety percent silver, I would say probably about I don't know maybe a quarter out of my viewers. Uh, really love this stuff. Um, you know, it confuses some new stackers because it's 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 not uh, you know one ounce. It's it's it, yep. you've got to do a little math with it. And similar to the semi numismatics and numismatics you just talked about, it it can be confusing, right? It can be a little intimidating for somebody who's new to stacking or investing in silver. Everyone to look at it to buy, but um, I'm just not seeing it. Back in the day, I used to go into the coin shop, and it just used to be ever. It used to always be there. It's just hardly there these days. Do you? Do you have any insights as to what's going on with 90%? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's there's only a limited amount of this stuff. I mean, it's not like Silver Eagles where more is going to come onto the market every single year, but it, it is getting tighter, too. And premiums have gone up, too. They, they followed a lot of the, the premiums and the other coins, too. Um, I'm just looking at one of our most popular 90% silver um, products, which is a 90% silver $100 face value. And I could send you this chart if you want to include it uh, on the recording later. But you'll see that that premiums at one point, and, and once again, going back to that soft period too, if you look at 2018 through 2020, before the pandemic, this stuff was selling at practically melt. Um, and now for, for it, premiums have gone up and up and up. And there was a time even in 2023, I think after that uh, SVB crisis earlier in the year, um, premiums for the hundred dollar face value bag were, were about twelve hundred dollars over spot per bag. Um, now it's currently lower; it's about four hundred dollars over. But you know it, it, they're following premiums on a lot of products too. But uh, you know I don't know. Ninety percent is a little more difficult to forecast the premiums, like I said, because they aren't making it. But I would imagine that these premiums are going to trend similarly to other products. Yeah, yeah. It, it it feels like just in conversations I've had with with my coin dealers and now you about 90 percent that um, people were just a little reluctant to sell right now. Maybe it's because of what they paid for it over the last couple of years. Uh, yeah. And anyone who um, was looking to get rid of it probably did when premiums were were higher. Right. So a lot of folks are maybe upside down a little on their most recent uh, uh, silver purchases due to those premiums. So probably probably could be a reason why it's not walking back into the coin sure. shop. Um, hey, Patrick, another question for you. So I, I like me personally, I like um, my philosophy is generic silver rounds. And I call that like a layer of fat, something to protect the rest of my stack in case I fall on hard times. 
yeah. uh, because you, you know you're paying a lower premium for them. I also like American Silver Eagles living here in the United States. They're the most in, it's the most in demand coin. Uh, people always want them around me. Uh, and ten ounce generic silver bars. Those are like the three silver items that I that I really like. And then just you know, based on the price of gold, obviously it makes more financial sense to save and try to purchase a full one ounce gold coin or bar if you're gonna uh, you know stack gold. But but guys like me, I do a lot of fractional gold buying. I'm curious, what are you into? <laughs> Everybody's budget's different. Their their reasons yeah. are different. But but what do you like? I personally like for the gold side, I like one ounce gold maple leaves and one ounce gold eagles are, are my preferred choice over there. On the, the silver side, um, I do like uh, silver eagles, I like silver maples, and I like 100 ounce silver bars are, are my, mine. Uh, but I what I mean, you, you kind of brought it up too. I could get into exactly what customers are buying on our end. I have um, other slides too from this the, the conference presentation that I did last month. But um, if you're interested in that, I can give you more data in terms of whether people are buying bars, coins, or rounds, what people are specifically buying on the coin side, the bar side, and the round side, if, if you're interested. I, I am actually interested. And, and one of the reasons that I'm interested, I'll just put it out there, is I try to encourage my viewers to buy what other people are buying. And the reason for that is when you go to sell, that's what people are going to be buying. You know, there's a reason why it's popular. Uh, one of the worst situations you can find yourself in is when you feel like you're protecting yourself financially by by buying gold and silver, and then you you don't have a market to sell to during your, your your time, or you have to take it to a local coin shop where they're going to offer you the absolute lowest uh, uh, premium, you know, on, on stuff because they 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 treat a lot of things like generic if it's not a American Silver Eagle, for instance. Um, yeah, so yeah, if you don't mind sharing that information, I can I can actually edit it into this. Some of it might have already been shown if you're watching this video right now on YouTube. I might have already thrown it in there, but I'm I'm happy to share whatever you're happy to share. Anything yeah. to, to give our guys, guys and girls an advantage, um, you know, during their own stacking journey. Okay, so let's first look at product type on the silver side. So 48% of our dollar sales year to date is, is basically, and this is on the silver side, um, is a coin. Um, so by far, the most popular product is a silver coin. Um, from there, you have another 32% buying silver bars. And then silver rounds, you have about 20%. So, you know, basically coins are the most popular, followed by bars, followed by rounds. Um, if you look at size, um, about 49% buy one ounce sizes. Um, so, so this is basically um, your, 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 your Buffalo Rams, your Silver Eagles, and so on like that. Um, what is it? 17% uh, buy um, basically up to 10 ounces. So between one and 10. So these are your five ounce, maybe your 100 gram. Um, another 10% buy basically, um, what is it? Above, or sorry, let me... Um, is there a, a I don't know if I have, oh, sorry. Yeah, so um, and you can show these charts. I'll send them over to you. So ten percent buys about uh ten percent or ten ounce up to ninety nine ounces. Um, another eleven percent buys a hundred ounces, and then about seven percent buys um over a hundred ounces. So these are the large bars. Yeah, I've got one one hundred ounce silver bar. That's it. <laughs> it's yeah. just, <laughs> it was a goal of mine. Got it. It it doesn't come out much because I I, I took it out of the box a few times for videos, and then uh, maybe the third time I pulled it out, it was tarnishing. And I was like, okay, all right, we'll 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 stop pulling this out. So yeah. uh, here in Florida, things tarnish pretty quick, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. especially if you leave them out on the desk for a couple of days, like I did. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for sharing sharing that information. Uh, I could I was, get, get the silver coin side too, if you want to. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind breaking. So I I typically encourage, and I have been encouraging my viewers that aren't buying silver rounds to look at the uh, Canadian silver maple leaf as 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 their coin. Obviously, the Britannias, the Philharmonics, Krugerrands, some of those other uh, you know coins out there, they do tend to offer a little better value. But you've got the unnecessary um, risk added when buying them of the milk spotting. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people say, I don't care if it's milk spotted or not. But I, I can promise you every time I've gone into my coin dealer and tried to sell something like that, that's the first question out of their mouth. Are, are they are they clean or are they spotted? <laughs> you know, Because people buy with their eyes. So, yeah, if you don't mind sharing any breakdown you've got on the coins, I, I, I'm curious to know how uh, the maple leaf stacks up to the eagle in particular. So the Eagle is 38% of our um, coin sales year to date. Um, so by far the most popular. The Maple is 14%, so a little less than, than let's say, half. 90% um, silver, which we spoke about earlier, makes up about 11%. Um, so a lot of people are buying that. About 5% Morgan dollars and, and Peace dollars. 
Um, when you mentioned some of the other coins too, kangaroos are, are about 4%, philharmonics are about 3%, uh, Krugerrands um, about 2% too. But the thing I, I mentioned to the conference listeners on this is I said, let's say you wanted to buy um, a large allocation of silver. Let's say you wanted to buy a couple thousand ounces. You, you had money to put into this. I would recommend you get one of the top products. You want to get the Eagle. You want to get the Maple. Um, like something like the Krugerrand, the Philharmonic, the Kangaroo, they're great coins. If you have a few of those, no problem. But let's say you had 3,000 silver Krugerrands that you're trying to sell. Um, your your local coin dealer may not be as interested in that as opposed to if you had 3,000 silver eagles. And, and it's just about, you know, popularity. You want something that's easy to get in, easy to get out, um, something that's super recognizable. I agree. And I must also add there's the sales tax element uh, that can drive some of your buying decisions. Here in Florida, you have to spend 500 or more on anything that wasn't minted at the U.S. Mint. So if I'm buying... Uh, you know, 10 Britannia or 10 out, let's say a 10 ounce uh, silver Britannia, that's taxable. But if I'm uh, buying 10 ASEs, yeah, there's a higher premium, but I'm not having to pay that six and a half percent sales tax. So that's that's another thing uh, that I that I try to bring up. My my personal coin dealers don't like buying the foreign silver coins if they're not in a complete tube. It, it just they have to sit on them a lot of times or they if, if it's not in a tube, they get treated like generic silver rounds. And so if you're a buyer of the Britannia, the Krugerrand, the Kangaroo, be forewarned that there are coin shops that will offer no premium on the sales side for those products. They treat them like generic silver rounds. So you would have done better by just paying less premium up front for for silver rounds. Um, and now that premiums have come down on Maple Leafs and American Silver Eagles, and this is a time-sensitive message, but <laughs> it makes more sense, in my opinion, to focus on those particular coins here in North America. Uh, whereas a year ago, I would have been, you know, suggesting to stick with Britannia or Krugerrand or Silver Rounds because it just the spreads, the spreads were so much better on those products. And I say that because people will fall on hard times, you know. People uh, go in with the best of intentions to stack weight, and then something happens. And next thing you know, they're at the coin shop trying to trying to raise cash, and that puts them off of silver. Now they don't like silver anymore. They're they you know they 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 don't come back because they got burned, right? So if I can help you prevent, you know, some sometimes you got to sell. It's going to happen to all of us at one point or another, most likely. But um, if I can help you not take such a kick when that time comes, then. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to do that. And Patrick, thanks for sharing that information. Little surprised that Eagles were that high. Um, I could, I guess, I could see them coming that high now. But over the last, uh, the whole year, 2023, I'm surprised you guys are are selling that many ASEs in a way. But um, they are the most popular coin. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, it's some, it's some guys. That's the only thing they buy. That's all they'll buy. So, yeah, I, I, I like Eagles. I, I, I didn't buy Eagles um, during the, the mess pandemic mess. Uh, but, you know, what what I have been doing just personally, too, and, and I know we mentioned one gold in the beginning, but one gold was a great way to avoid premiums, because what what you're buying on one gold, you're buying ownership in like a 400 ounce bar or a thousand ounce silver bar. And the premiums on these thousand ounce silver bars never hit where where the retail premiums were. So, for example, we could buy a, a thousand ounce silver bar for about 30 cents um, per ounce over spot, as opposed to the Eagle. Like I mentioned, we paid north of 10, 11 bucks at one, one point. So I got into a position on one gold to get access to the silver. And then I said, hey, I'm going to wait for premiums to go down. Um, and then I'm going to use the redemption option and basically swap out my position in one gold for those silver eagles, which I like. But I just was had no interest in paying over ten dollars over spot for silver eagle. Um, now that they're getting getting lower, I, I'm I'm more interested. Yeah, absolutely. And and hey, I think we should uh, try to get. To, I mean, we're talking out loud here, but I'd, I'd like to talk with you more about one gold. As mentioned, I think it's time I I do an update. It's been a couple of years since I've reviewed the service, and and now that you're a part of it, and I and I know who you are, yeah, I'll definitely have some some questions for you on, sure. on the service. Um, so, Patrick, is there is there anything else out there that you'd like to share regarding, uh, you know, things you're working for at Max or just anything you'd like to pass on to my my viewers as uh, as, as far as uh, tips, advice, suggestions? We get a, about 30 percent of my viewers um, own less than 100 ounces of silver. So they're you know kind of just getting started. Uh, anything you'd like to add? <laughs> Just leave it at that. Yeah, I would say, I would say one, one cool thing that I've been involved in is a bullion card. It's the first precious metals rewards credit card. 
Um, a couple stats about it. It gives you 4% back on Atmex um, and one gold. So basically you're, you're paying the same amount after your points um, as, as your cash and wire price. Um, it gives you 1% back on everyday spend. Um, it has a couple of 0% APR offers. So if you have a credit card balance, it offers 0% balance transfer APR for, for 12 months. So you can save some money there. Um, 0% purchase APR uh, for 12 months too as well. So if you want to buy gold or silver, you can buy it on this card um, and basically, you know, pay for it later. And one of the neat things I, I did of mine is it gives you 15,000 bonus points, which has a $150 value after spending $1,500 in the first 90 days. So I got a card, like I mentioned, um, I bought an ounce of gold um, and I got the $150 back and that ounce of gold was below spot. So I will not complain ever any anytime I get gold below spot, but it's a cool product to check out. Like I said, I, I have personally have it, haven't got a credit card in over 15 years, but if you're interested in that, check out check it out at thebullioncard.atmex.com. All right, absolutely. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put that link in the video description section. I have not applied for the card yet. Um, it is something that I've looked at, though. Maybe maybe here in the future. I do like the fact that when I do buy from Atmex uh, using my uh, Capital One card, which is the one credit card I use all the time, yeah. uh, sometimes it ships that day. And that's really cool, especially when you buy on a Friday and it shows up Monday. I, I, yeah. I really like that. So. Um, Patrick, hey, thank you for taking time to come on and talk with us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time here. I sure, I certainly did. And I hope you guys out there watching enjoyed. Uh, go ahead and put your questions down in the comment section. If there's anything I didn't cover, anything I missed, I'd be happy to send that to the team at Atmex. And if Patrick has the time, maybe he can get me a response and I can answer that question for you. Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll do these again in the future and obviously more precious metals content coming. So uh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, thank you, Atmex, for being here today. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Great. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.